Welcome to this episode number 61 of your next trade called Today JP Morgan Omen. I was off for 10 days. I went back and traded the market again from uh, last Monday. So the market this week was pretty much volatile. A lot of uh, volatility, especially at the end of the week. But actually, we had a lot of volatility as well across asset classes uh, during the midweeks due to uh, inflation, earnings, and some tension, even more tension in the Middle East. So let's start with why JP Morgan and Omen. So the earnings season started yesterday on Friday with JP Morgan releasing their earnings. So, so far, what is interested to us as traders is to understand what happened in the past and to kind of, you know, comparing what have been the moves during earnings and what is the market pricing in terms of implied volatility. So let's start with JP Morgan, as always, which is, you know, the biggest company starting the earnings season. More recently, how the stock has been moving. So the last four earnings, or I should say even more than that, you know, five to six earnings season, the stock was flattish to small up. And overall, the stock was moving by 3% over the last nine to 10 earnings season. So pretty good, um, especially over the last year or so where uh, the banks, JP Morgan, have been beating expectations. What happened? On, on Friday before the open, uh, JP Morgan released their earnings and they said that their net interest income uh, will be around 90 billion when the market was expecting closer to 90 bi 91 billion. Is it such a big deal? I don't think that is, but like many stocks, uh, JP Morgan went since the start of November into a big rally. Uh, literally, the stock went from 140 to uh, 195 something. So very big move. And due to these high expectations, with actually implied move was only 3.6%. So what does that tell you? You need to look at uh, the straddle that was yesterday looking at the call and the put at the money, and you will have seen that the expected move was 3.6%. Now the question is, what was the move in reality for JP Morgan on the day? Yesterday, the stock finished on minus 0.6.5%. And as you can see, this is a move that we haven't seen since 2020. So what does it tell you? It could tell you that, you know, JP Morgan, as a leading indicator, as one of the first companies to be releasing their earnings, might imply such a decent move into this earnings season. So one of your screenings should be look at what are the uh, expected move, what is the implied move, how the stock has been behaving so far year to date. We do know, as I said, over the last five months that the stock market has been on a huge move on the way up. Um, and now, you know, don't take the excuses of, you know, this is the CPI, this is the, uh, uh, the Middle East. The reality is this is normal now to have a correction, uh, to have a bit of a breather. Um, and I think the struggle for ma many market participants is as we do have inflation, you can't be, as always, you know, hiding and going for the flight to safety buying bonds. Why? Because when you have inflation, by definition, yields are going up, bonds are going down. So that means it's much more difficult for uh, the investors to hide and protect their portfolio by buying bonds. So as we saw this week, you know, one of the ways to protect your portfolio is to be buying silver, is to be buying gold for the new generation, let's say that would be more, more as well buying crypto. Uh, and you see these uh, uh, commodities as well going higher. In the meantime, you know, it's much difficult for investors uh, to be buying bonds due to inflation. And as well, we saw that with the VIX, we had a spike in the VIX. So the VIX now is around 18%, went up to 19%. We're going to have the uh, option expiry of the VIX. Uh, that's, this is this, uh, this, this Wednesday and then the option expiry uh, for, the, uh, for the option on, on Friday. So let's start with the year-to-date asset performances. What do we have? Um, the stocks are still, the stock indices are still up. You know, we are talking 7 to 8% for the US. We are talking much more for uh, Japan as always. Why? Because the currency has been pretty weak. So if you adjust to the currency, we are roughly up 10%. So overall, if you talk Japan, if you take Europe, if you take US, we are up between 7 to 10%. Uh, crypto is still very much up. You see that the dollar is now much stronger for the year, roughly 5% 
overall, we are talking 3.6% versus, versus the euro. And overall, the commodities, WTI, copper, uh, pretty strong for the year. So uh, we have another flight to safety, but buying the real assets like uh, WTI, copper, gold that have been doing pretty well. So what is the picture week to date? Week to date, pretty, uh, I think it's one of the worst weeks, it's probably uh, October or November. But we are only 2% for the S&P, minus 1.6%, 0.5% for the Nasdaq. So again, IT tech outperforming the overall market, Russell down 3%. So you remember a couple of weeks ago, three weeks ago, everyone was shouting and saying, oh, don't worry, there is a broadening of the market, you know, everything is fine, we are going into the small and mid caps. And guess what? Everyone that has been saying these things on, on Twitter, they are very quiet now because there is not that much broadening. Uh, the Russell is underperforming massively 3% for the week. Here, big picture, dollar has been very, very strong. So it's not dollar versus the euro or, or, or only. That would be versus most currencies. We had a big move on the dollar yen, a breakout of the 152. So many eyes will be on that one. A bit of risk off on, on, on crypto, not that much so far. And gold WTI commodities trading sideways. But actually, it's a bit of a false picture, especially with uh, with the gold, which has a bit of a, of a big move yesterday uh, on Friday. So the year to date industry performance, uh, as we, we discussed many, many times, you know, this is the S&P, as you can see, uh, we don't have that many industries that are outperforming the S&P for the year, and, and many actually are outperforming. The reason is this market is very much concentrated in very few industries, very few sectors, very few, few names. So if we look at the week to date industry performance here, you're going to have the king dollar, you're going to have the king silver, and you're going to have the king gold. This is really one of these weeks. This is risk, a risk off for the whole week. And the rest, you know, we got everything that is done. Interestingly, as we can see, we start to see some names, some industries that were very, very strong. We are talking home builders. We are talking regional uh, banks, not regional banks, banks only that have been struggling for the week. So you can argue this is a bit of a... Um, of taking some chips off the out of the table, I think it, it, it's it's more than that. And and JP Morgan, which has been the leader, as I said before, uh, for the overall market, uh, has been struggling on on its earnings. So. Looking at the week to date sector performance, IT technology is still outperforming the market quite a lot. So very uh, only down 0.5%, as we're going to see later. It's mostly because of the big names, the big uh, weightings of the index. This is the same story. Financials, that is not a good story going forward uh, when financials start to underperform. Even, you know, anything that is healthcare, which is defensive, has been underperforming. So the picture for the week, very much like a weekish risk off week. Going into the rate, so I'm interested at two things. You can be doing much more, but you know, I'm pretty basic as a trader, let's say. I'm going to be doing, looking at the 10, at the two years. So what is the 10 years uh, saying these days? 4.52%. Uh, you remember or not, like three or four weeks ago, we look at the 4.2%. So we, we, we used to have a trading range between 38 to 4.2%. Why we were waiting for lower or higher inflation. Inflation has been higher than expected through the CPI, lower through the PPI. And the market since then, or I should say over the last two to three weeks, has been moving from 4.2% and above. Uh, so for the two years, we are similar, you know, we are at 4.8% something. But that tells you that the moves in, in yields have been on the way up pretty much. Uh, inversion is the same as it has been recently. So for the steepening of uh, or any trade like this has been a bit of a of a fail. What about the Fed fund rates? Why we are looking at Fed fund rates? Because we want to understand how the market is pricing Fed expectations going into the next few months. So if we look at the last one, the Fed fund rates 5.33%. How does it compare with the, the 492 expectations for December 2024, that means 0 .4, minus 0 0.41. So that is not even two rate cuts now expected from the FOMC uh, before the end of, of this year. So we see the changes from the last that was as of yesterday and, and what we can compare that was a week before. So everything has been going higher, meaning what? That we are expected 
the Fed, the central bank in the US to be less accommodative than it was a couple of weeks ago, very much less than it was in December. So in December, the same picture will I give you a 1.5%, 1.6% cut for 2024. Why? Again, because we have inflation, we get the second wave of inflation and uh, the uh, central banks like the Fed uh, are not going to be able to be as accommodative as before. VIX, it's not a perfect indicator, but you know, it's, it's one easy to understand from day one. What do we have? We got 17.3%. We went above 19%. As we discussed before for quite some time for three months roughly we traded between 12 to 15 percent and each time we were above 15 percent there were a lot of uh, uh, instruments that are selling volatility that were activated and thinking okay volatility is too high we are selling volatility you get volatility compression and suddenly you know you had the, the stock market going higher more recently volatility started to go a bit higher there was uh, underneath uh, the realized volatility and the implied volatility that started to go higher. Now we are at 17%. Uh, it could go much higher, as you can see in this chart. So be extremely careful where you say, oh, it's at 17% where it was um, um, much lower before. What does it tell you? Actually, you know, it's harder now to be playing uh, protection hedges uh, with uh, with put uh, with the VIX. Why? Because the definition is you feel like you've been missing and it could go back and reverting to the mean. So it's uh, it, it's as always, you know, when you think that uh, the market is very quiet and nothing is going to happen, this is probably when you should be hedging yourself. And now, if you're not hedged with your portfolio, you get a bit of a dilemma because the uh, the VIX, the implied volatility, should I say, for most products, is is much higher. So I want to jump now into the uh, the charts, looking at the at the. Um, S&P 500. Okay, so the S&P 500 here, this is the, the daily chart through the, through the S&P futures. As we can see, we were pretty much extended, and that's an understatement. I would like to, to, to change it into the weekly. We had many green weeks, and more recently, we have been a bit struggling. So we are back to this channel. What I think is interesting from this level is uh, not for the, for the future, of, uh, for the S&P cash. If you are around 5120, this is more or less the close that we had as of yesterday. There is a lot of CTAs, which are, you know, uh, uh, trending markets, actively trending the market, where actually there, is, there are some signs that, you know, those CTAs could be going forward, selling the market. So this is something to be keeping an eye, uh, an eye here because, you know, a lot of these moves going forward have been uh, actionated to, to, due to uh, new flows going into the, uh, into the market. What about the NASDAQ? NASDAQ, pretty much the picture to me is, is, is telling you that the trend that we started at the uh, um, start of November is broken now. Um, that doesn't mean that we're going to go back uh, directly uh, into free fall, but at least the trend is over. Russell never managed to really uh, uh, definitely broke the 21 level. Now we are back to an interesting level. I'm interested now into, into this fang of this world. So, you know, we are always trying to look at those uh, fabulous seven and saying, you know, when is it going to stop? And this week, actually, we had a strong week in, uh, in Apple, which, which did very well, um, as we're going to discuss later from Thursday onward. So overall, what does it tell you? You know, market is very still very much driven by this 30% weighting on the S&P, this is why you don't see the S&P collapsing. Uh, uh, go, uh, so not gold, oil, uh, around 85. So here, it's a bit of, of scratching your head because, you know, uh, on Friday, Thursday, everyone was saying, okay, the market is, is selling off due to, to the Middle East. Okay, if that's the only the Middle East, you will not see the oil at 85. You will see oil literally going to 90 and above. So, you know, don't put like, you know, uh, uh, stories on the market when they are not the right one. The market is has been struggling due to higher inflation, has been struggling to earnings expectations that even they have been lowered, you know, uh, we had a, a strong rally and the difficulty going forward, as I said, to hedge yourself uh, due to the fact that you can't do that by buying bonds. Um, so it's it makes your 60-40% portfolio or any hedging much difficult to, 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 to do with. 
copper uh, still strong um, but we have a we have an interesting uh, a candle so a bit of uncertainty gold so we had a big move so i want to switch from from weekly to to daily where uh, Friday we had this, this massive move. So we went from 24.30 and we closed around 4 to 4% below. So really, really big move. Uh, a lot of, of money inflows, both from central banks and from retail. Uh, if you look at silver, if you look, this is something that we discussed on the community, on the Discord community. So if you're not on Discord, please join. This is for free. There are channels explaining you how to trade. And one of them is the silver. There have been tons of goals, uh, of silver calls that were bought on the week. The one I'm interested in is the euro dollar. So let me go back into the weekly picture. Um, as I said before, I think it was three or four weeks ago, I had a position in euro dollar. I sold the euro. Um, why? Because I think uh, we're going to see a weakening of the euro. And uh, for this week, I was pretty, pretty correct. So um, euro dollar, um, uh, stronger dollar, same on the dollar yen. So here, this is the big move. Everyone is watching it. Uh, imagine that that will be just a stock. Obviously, you will be saying this stock is going much, much higher. So this is the scratching of your uh, of the um, of your trade going forward. Why? Because you might be fighting the Bank of Japan and some interventions. But so far, you know, this is a big breakout. Um, JP Morgan. So this is the, the story um, I didn't put it. I put it on my Bloomberg, but not on that chart. This is pretty obvious that, you know, this up is broken. What is important always is looking at the price action, but look at the volume, very big volume on uh, Friday. If we go back into the daily, as you can see, this is a massive move. So it's not like a, it's only going to be a one-off, net interest income a bit lower, but after such a big move, as I said, from 135 to almost 200, uh, now there is a bit of a turn. So let's move back into, into the Excel spreadsheet. I'm interested into this week what has been happening. And I always start with the S&P uh, 500 futures. So not much happening before we get the CPI. Okay, so we had the CPI, the market, why the market didn't like it. As you can see over the last three months, this is the months on months, we are trending around 0.3%, 0.4%. So if you remember or not in December, uh, the FOMC meeting, uh, Powell said, you know, this is fine. We're good going forward. Inflation is, is going to be uh, much lower and we might be accommodative and reducing the size of the balance sheet. So we went from in 2021, there's not going to be inflation. It's going to be transitory. Then we had massive inflation. Now they have been telling us, you know, this is just a bit of seasonality. When you have three months in a row where inflation is higher than expectation and where the trend is going higher, then you get a problem. And that could tell you that you might have the second wave of inflation. Why? Because when wages, wages, you don't ask for an increase overnight. It takes time. And that means, you know, uh, uh, employees will come to their, uh, to, their to their companies and say, okay, can I have a wage increase? And that explains some of the inflation that we are seeing these days. And as well, the market didn't like on Wednesday, we had an auction, a 10 year auction, which was pretty bad. So uh, 10 years, just before the auction, the 10 years roughly was trading at 4.52%. And it was uh, auction at 4.656%. So this is here, what I want to do these days is obviously, I'm interested into the auction uh, of the bond auctions. Why? because we do know that the US is running a huge deficit. We are talking between 5 to 7% of the GDP. When you're running a deficit, you need to be calling the market and putting some paper, putting some supply in the market. And that means every single week or every single two weeks, you're going to have some auctions. And that will decide um, where is the price of the 10 years, the two years, and the five years. So I'm interested into that. On Thursday, this is the opposite. What happens is actually the PPI was a bit lower than expected. We had a good 30 years auction and then the market moved higher. But I think the big reason for the move is it was not that much. Uh, PPI was a bit better, auction was a bit better, but we had a massive move in Apple. So Apple came with 
uh, actually some news or rumors about you know uh, artificial artificial intelligence for their uh, Mac and suddenly if you look at the price action actually I didn't put it here and I should have uh, so if you look at the calls 172.5 that were closing on Friday yesterday. Um, we had just before the 10 years, the 30 years of short at 6 p.m., we had 4,000 calls that were bought. And guess what? From that, the market started to ramp up. So if we look at the numbers of calls that were bought on Apple on that day, we are talking, you know, 1.5 million something, which is m way, way above the average. And as you can see here, there was an army on Thursday of calls that were about on the 170 call, 172, 175. Only that we are talking 400,000 calls, okay? If roughly this is a 0 0.8 uh, delta, so 400 times 0 0.8, that gives you 3.2, 3.2, that gives you, uh, sorry, 0 0.320,000 times 100, that gives you uh, 32 million shares, 32 million shares, that was, you know, one third in Delta of, of the Apple stocks that were traded on that day. And this move explained a lot of this move that we had on the S&P, because when you get Apple, that is still, you know, 5% of the S&P and is moving 5% in a straight line, that explains 0.25% of 25 bips. And that helps the whole market to go up. So this is what we had for this week. As well, we had the ECB, so ECB on Thursday, where the story is going forward. Actually, the ECB might be cutting rates before uh, the, the, the Fed, and that will be the expectations are now for June. So that explained a bit of weaker euro. We get the commodities up again because people are going for real assets for protection. And I think, you know, for this week, what is very important, and that's something to check going forward. This is only the start of the earnings season, but JP Morgan was pretty, pretty bad. So what about the catalyst? Catalyst is about earnings. We started, we just started the earnings season, so I'm interested into something that is here. This is the implied move that the market is pricing versus how the stock has been doing and versus how the stock has been doing uh, historically over the uh, last earnings season. So how the stock has been behaving. So if you think about JP Morgan, JP Morgan went in a straight line from 135 to one to 200. <laughs> Expectations were pretty high. And despite all of this, you know, implied volatility was at 3.6%. Guess what? We did twice of this move. So anyone that was selling volatility get killed on the name. So I'm interested, for example, you know, if you look at at Netflix, you know, it's not on the yeah, Netflix is here, you got 8%, but the stock is very strong for the week, for the for the year. So I'm interested into those earnings. It's only the start, but we get some big names. Um, we get Goldman Sachs, for example. We get ASML. So if you are interested, obviously, at inter uh, um, artificial intelligence, AI, and how the summaries will be doing the, in the future, you are you should be looking at ASML and you should be looking at TSM. Uh, so that will be Thursday. But we get plenty of names. We get Nokia. We get Netflix. So I'm not going to go through all of them. But earnings season is really starting. In terms of macro, we get the retail sales on Monday. We do then have a bit of, of housing prices and housing, but not that much. So earnings, retail sales, as I said, CTAs level. Why? Because, you know, autom automatically, if the market starts to go down, they will, they will be forced to be selling more. Weekly straddle, what is priced? You know, weekly straddle, what does it tell you? It is how the option market is pricing the move for the next five days on the S&P. So here I'm taking the SPY, which is the, S the ETF of the S&P 500. And we're expected, expecting a move between minus plus 1.8% for the week. As well, we're going to have some Fed speakers, as always. Uh, so that's going to be interesting to see what they're going to, their comments about, you know, inflation, CPI, PPI, cut, no cut. Um, it's going to be a bit of noise around this one. And we have, as well, some auction, bond auction, the big one being on Wednesday, the 13 billion 20 years. So overall, a lot of, um, of earnings to look at. The start of earnings season, you're going to have some big names as well in, in Europe. You are talking LVMH. We are talking LVMH on Tuesday. We are talking L'Oreal on Thursday. So that's going to give you the spectrum of the, the different sectors. As always, we mostly start 
with the banks. Okay, so we're gonna have to see, you know, how the uh, bank banking system is going go, going forward. And and I'm talking uh, the price performance, but we have as well some others like you know airlines here. We're gonna have semiconductors. So. Really, if you have exposure to one of the sectors, one industries, look at the leaders, what they are saying and what is the price action telling you. And you can compare, you know, implied move versus historical move and how the stock has been doing year to date and over the last uh, two months. So this is it for me today. As I said before, you know, please join us on the trading community. So trading community, it's on Discord. We get three free channels, mostly one free channel where I try to put uh, some content where uh, we get more and more, you know, uh, uh, traders uh, adding some content. We have 20 more uh, channels roughly, which are uh, for people that have done the 4 by 4 video series and or the mentoring. So for the mentoring, as I said, uh, that was three weeks ago. It's going to be pretty packed uh, going forward. So if you get an interest, you should be very, uh, you should hurry because, you know, the, there are less and less uh, seats uh, going forward for the mentoring and for, and for, for, and for the 4x4 four four video series. This is the same as usual. If you get questions, you can reach me either on social media or send me an email directly. So for this week, Mostly about earnings season uh, starting, you know, um, don't think that this is only because of CPI, this is only because of, of the Middle East. There are some other signs that actually uh, uh, over the last couple of, of weeks that the market was a bit turning. So far, uh, the tech, the, the Fabulous 7 have been holding very, very well, doing pretty, pretty well, uh, and that's holding the market. So this is it for me for this week. Have a good trading week, and I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.